Yo, what's up guys? It's Silk here. And today we are back on Nancha Strike, flying out the Frogfoot, which is a jet that I don't really get to fly out too often. And I've decided this game I want to go for a bit of a 100 bomb. So 100 kills in one match in the attack jet is definitely no joke. You have to have like a 4 or 5 kills per minute. So we're going to see if we can get that done today. And straight away, just going to wipe out both jets. Stealth jet's really oblivious and attack jet seems decent just by the way he's flying so far. Obviously not very decent, but, you know, you survive the first couple loops with minimal damage taken, but that's partly because of my bad aim here. And this one right here, the Frogfoot, is actually probably the, the second or the maybe the best attack jet in the game. And the only reason I say it could be the best attack jet in the game is that your wingman is going to be in an SU-50, which is the second best stealth jet, whereas the Fantan is, is the best attack jet by design but it has the J-20 as its wingman, and the J-20 is really, really bad. Like, you're at such a disadvantage if you fly that thing. So having a good wingman in this jet and potentially flying against J-20s, which is what I'm doing right here, is a really good situation. I love flying against J-20 pilots. Usually I can kill them before they even get anywhere near me. <laughs> this guy's angry in the squad chat. Drive the fucking boat. Oh, well. Just looking for infantry here, can't really see much. I use the big map a lot as well, and we're going to have to up the pace a little bit here if we want to get 100 kills. Getting a few kills here is nice, but going to need to get the kills just flooding in at this point. See if I can clean up this little rib boat here. Usually I'd use hydro rockets here, but on this map they're actually bugged out and they'll go straight through the water unless you direct hit them, so I think it's easier just to go for the, the uh, cannons instead of direct hits. Got a stealth jet here, just gonna clean that one up. I've switched to a new mouse pad for this video. It's a uh, it's a sky pad. Not sponsor or anything, but they did send me it, and it's really, really cool. It's a glass mouse pad and it's it's making my aim a little bit more consistent a lot of the time, but it's also a bit weird sometimes as well. So I'm trying to get used to that. I could attach it behind me. I'm pretty comfortable having jets behind me as long as it's not the stealth jet. It's going to bring him away from the lock. Just scissor away. And now that I'm far enough away, I'll start to kind of close in the scissors. Start cutting his angles a lot more. And he's given up at this point, which is good. And into the ground. And I've got a boat here. I'm trying not to kill the boats too much because I want the game to be as even as possible. So when you're going for these like high kill games, you really want the, the ticket count to be pretty much even the whole way through or at least end at like a zero, zero, one. Like you want it to be as close to that as possible. Scout heli hit me hard before, but it didn't actually kill me. Tried to kill the transport and the stealth jet couldn't finish up on it, which is unfortunate. These flags down here are usually where it's at. A couple kills there. And if you enjoy this gameplay, by the way, it is actually taken from my stream over at twitch.tv slash silk. Stream five days a week. We've been doing a lot of this lately. The, the Nancha rounds specifically have been really good on stream. I've been trying to play it a little bit more. It's a very, very good situation for the attack jet. One of the few maps where I'll run this farming loadout, which is pretty much just fully optimized just for farming people. Uh, I use the Hydra Rockets, the Flares, and uh, Stealth Coating. So basically just specking into killing infantry and not dying to lock-ons. You get really fast regen on the Flares and they work every time. And because there's a lot of cover on this map and I'm familiar with how to use it, I can fly really, really aggressively. Like that, I know exactly where this thing is, and if I need a dodge, I can use this island for example. So I'm gonna get down low, and the stinger lock is broken. If that was a stinger and not an igla, that would have probably hit me there. But 100 health, I have a bit of health to play with. Not really a worry. Uh, flared really early there, that was quite stupid to be honest. I'm used to using flares, or ECM sorry. So whenever I use flares, I sometimes make that mistake. Not a big deal though. 
Now, I'm still so largely undecided on whether the the ECM or the flares are the better option for the attacher. I'm not sure yet. For just hardcore farming without much uh, people contesting you, I think the flares are hard to beat. But ECM provides like a really good advantage. You can sneak up on jets without being on the radar. And against javelins, which is something that I'm seeing more and more lately, it's really strong for that as well. That's what I like about the J20 to shoot against. It's just so big. It's hard to miss that thing. And try to dodge using this island again, but it's a stinger this time, so... Can't really do much. Tried to nose it down into the island, but didn't happen. If you time that right, you can actually force a stinger to go down like that. It doesn't matter, though. Got my flares back. Which means, as long as I get locked, uh, it's not going to hit me. And as soon as I've lined up a kill and I'm pretty much ready to escape the strafe, I often like going third person just to watch out for other threats. Sometimes you'll see a stealth check coming at you or TV, Sraw, all these kind of things that you wouldn't really see in your cockpit as often. Not sure where that guy went. I'm kind of scared of boats a little bit because I haven't really done much to the boats this game, but hopefully they don't do anything to me either because I would like them to stay alive and just kind of even out the game. Looks really good right now. They have a few good infantry players on their team and they have a lot of caps, so should be able to keep it even here. That guy and try to get that guy, but I'm not quick enough, fortunately. Did not see the target early enough. This boat just looks like it's free kills. It's not really I had to kill it, it's just the easiest target available right now. And my team is losing by over 100 tickets, so I want to try to carry a little bit. Kill some vehicles. And get them back in the game just a little bit. And that's really what it's about when you're trying to farm these public matches. It sounds kind of scum, but you are trying to create as close of a game as you can. You're trying to control the, the margin as much as you possibly can. And in the attack jet, it's such a strong vehicle, you can actually often do that. It's fun though. It's uh, something to learn how to do in pubs. Surprised I didn't get two kills there, but that's what it is. Because I know where the lock is, I can get some altitude instead of hiding behind an island and prepare the next strafe. It's probably going to be at the top of that hill. There should be a few around here, I just can't see them. There's two. That's all you need. Two kills a strafe is very good. And three and four is pretty elite territory. Almost got a third there. I mean, to even see three kills in a strafe is actually pretty hard. And I find it's a bit of a trade-off as well. You have to slow down the jet so much that you're often going to get TV'd and thrawed. I like to keep my jet decently fast. A lot of Hydra users will pretty much go down to like 200Ks an hour when they strafe. And I really didn't want any part of that head-on. I'd much rather this nice big angle here where I can just kill the guy. Nice and quick farm. And I'm not going to go and strafe again. Just don't have health to do that. Staying a little bit back, the last thing I want is a stealth jet right now. Kind of lost track of the timing for it. And now we've got some health regen, we're going to go back in. I did see that buggy, but I did think there was more targets available. <laughs> I mean, there was more targets available, I just messed up. And we got a boat near the island, but not really necessary to kill it at this point. So I was talking to a really good player with Hydra Rockets. He's a console pilot, Lightning Zero. And apparently the way to go against gunships to kill him in one pass is to unload the cannons first, then go the rockets and the cannons again. So I'm trying to just do that every time. I used to just burst the cannons all the time and try to get it with those only. Don't quite see that guy, but... End up getting the spotlight in the strafe. 
It's a technique with flares as well that you want to learn. It's to flare as late as possible. So as you're turning around, you're watching the missile. And as soon as you hit that cannon measures button, you know it's going to be uh, evaded. So leave it as late as possible so you get more time to strafe. Good little tactic. Couple kills there, and I know where some more are, which is always nice. It's always nice to know where your next strafe's going to be without having to look. And there's a gunship up too. Try to get this guy because he's reviving someone, but... The kill I got on the revive person, you can see in the kill feed, I got two kills there, but it didn't count because he was just revived too soon. Always target the stinger where you can, so we do that. And we've got a 40 kill streak going, which is really good. It's about 10 minutes into the round, so definitely not bad. We want to up the KBM though, still. It's a nice two piece. If I had more rockets, it'd be more. And I'm going to go back and look, but I didn't see anything there. I don't know why I went for this. It's a red boat. That was very ambitious. Trying to keep an eye on the stealth jet. Even though the attack jet seems like he's okay at the game. Always focus stealth jets. Just, it's a good habit to have. This guy was busy dealing with my stealth jet anyway. And he's light work. So I see a guy spotted in the trenches right here. Usually when there's one, there's more, so... And I tried to come back to him later after I found more people, but I didn't. Again, just flaring and coming back for another strafe. One kill there, and I'm ready to hide behind the islands, so should be a good dodge. Never mind, it went over. Unlucky, but it's alright. I feel like if you're not ever taking damage in the attack jet, you're probably just not pushing hard enough. You usually get more kills if you just play a little bit faster and take a bit of damage to stingers. It's important not to take two stingers at once, though, otherwise you're going to be dead. Should be a three kills here. Or not. I'm going to flare late, so I'm watching the missile. Flare as late as possible and try to kill the last guy. Get nice and low here. Weave between the poles. And my flares will almost be up again, which is what's crazy about flares. Pretty much always have them. Ready, ready to go. It honestly seems like the jet's cheating. If you if you play it well enough with the jet, people will call you out for cheats. That literally happens to me because I'm strafing so often and barely having to hide with flares. That's what's so crazy about them. The flare hacks is a common thing you get. Now about 13 minutes into the rounds, 14 minutes-ish. And we have uh, over 50 kills, which is nice. It's good pace. It's always good pace to be at 50 plus by the time the game's halfway through. The 100 bomb is definitely doable here. I'm gonna go for the gunship. Free kill, I guess. Unless my stealth jet comes and takes it. That's two kills, and we got a boat below us. Shouldn't be able to get a kill from this, but maybe some damage. Because my team is losing by over 100 tickets, I wanted to just kill the boats at least, or kill one of the boats and see how we go from there. We have a little flag advantage. We do not want to put the enemy team in base though. So what happens when I run JDAMs, I just kill too many vehicles that the enemy ends up getting in base, so... Hydras are nice for just controlling the pace a bit more. Tried to dodge that one, but it's alright. 100 health anyway. AA mine.
Flares. Get nice three kills there. I don't know how that ended up being three, but I will take it. We got a boat at the back of the map, but I haven't seen a single TV head my way, so I'm not going to worry about him. Just want to keep our team in the flag advantage. That's all I want to do. Got a stealth jet up, but I'm not going to fly anywhere near him without flares. If I don't have flares, it's just a really dumb decision. He could lock me up and kill me. <laughs> and the jets ran there, which is unfortunate. I don't really mind, though. I'm surprised they're not blaming each other in the chat. That's what happens every time someone rams. I always think it's the other person's fault. A few kills out of the gunship. We're just going to have a look down near the trenches. Should be one kill and a second. And I got the attach hit on me. I'm not stressing about that. I'm just going to bring him somewhere where I can fight him. You want to isolate your jet dog fights as much as possible. Either isolate them on the side of the map or in your spawn is even better. So the base A can help. It's a bit of a scum tactic, but especially against stealth jets, you just have to do it. And we got 65 kills, 67 in 16 minutes. It's really, really good. I want to keep pushing this though. So it should be like... C flag and then the E flag migrating towards the flag that we actually have. That's the safe assumption. And it's crazy how one of those guys was like 3D spotted, right? And just because that one player is 3D spotted, his whole squad gets killed. Because I've just seen where they are and I'm just going to clean them up. That's what's so like weird about 3D spotting. It's no fault of the guys who are unspotted that are getting killed there. But that's how BF4 works. Nice, this just counts as kill. That's perfect. I could have fled a little bit later there, but I had a stealth jet coming at me, so I'm just going to kind of fly upwards at the sky. Just keep switching towards the sky. Make sure I can dogfight him somewhere safe. Not the best spot to dogfight, though. Could have probably followed him there, but I just want to make sure I keep my distance. Do not want to get stingered here. Do not want to get rammed either. The time is on my side. I try to remember people's camos, so I know this camo right here. This guy is pretty weak at dogfighting, so I feel pretty confident to just go and do that. Whereas if it's a camo of a player that I know is good, I'm not gonna... I'll be much more risky with the stingers, you could say. I'm willing to potentially get stingered if it gives me an angle on them. I also like to watch the scoreboard for players that are good. I'll just keep an eye on their name and when they respawn. Often in these public games, when you get to a certain level, it's it's like a 1v, 1v1 or 1v2 or 2v2 against a few good players in the match, and then the rest of them are just, just farm. And we will not talk about that at all. It just is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a silly mistake. First death. So we've got another jet now. Gonna come straight for the gunship because I see it smoking and uh... Yeah, I mean that happens. I was just so focused on the jet. By the time I saw the transport heli just hovering there, it was far too late and... We died to it. It's a bit of an embarrassing death, but that's how it goes sometimes. Keep going though. Uh, now our team's actually in the... In the leading position and they have a lot of flags, which is good. This game is just so perfect for farm. Uh, passive radar's out of that boat, so I'm going to get some cover from it after I strafe. Hopefully another infantry, but couldn't see anything there. I should try to kill the boat, but at the same time, I know it's going to be a decently long fight if he has passives. So I'm just going to try to outrange it. Remember, against passive radars, you always want to fly low when you're in range of them. They can't lock you that way. And this helicopter... Uh, I'm going to tell my boat to push him, which is what I just did in the chat. And my boat's now pushing him. 
So that either forces him to fight the boat or run away. Let's get him. <laughs> yup. So he's uh he's done some damage to the heli. Now I'm gonna come in and try to clean it up. He should be low health, so I'm just gonna use the cannons there. Yeah. And it's on eight shady, so. Like that. <laughs> Gonna type easy in the chat, of course. Look, there's another one. Oh, no way that means. There's no way he should be there. It's just not the position for a little bird. You, you do not do that with a little bird, but he's just learning it. I believe we were both streaming on Twitch at the time as well, so it's kind of funny. He's one of the like the best infantry players I've ever seen. Got a stealth jet. Like if you're a stealth jet pilot, don't do this. This guy just shoots at me across the map, so I see where his lasers are coming from, and I'm so ready for the fight at this point. Get a quick 40 damage on him, switch opposite way, and I set up a massive head-on. So, well, it would have been a head-on if he had better speed control. I find dogfighting in public games is like a, a whole different style to what I'd use in a dogfight server. Like in the dogfight server, I have a more kind of passive, like looping style most of the time. And I do head on sometimes. In in public games, I'm trying to end the fight as quickly as possible, so I play very aggressive in dogfights. It's got to change your style depending on what you need. Gunship kill there. Just gonna check the hill. The hill's always oh, just got it. people on it. And unfortunately, we've been igloed through the flares there. That's an igloo bug. And that's gonna get us killed. Very, very unfortunate. Someone on the enemy team is igloo bugging, which is annoying. It's very rare that flares let you down, but they do sometimes. I don't know, attack jet, just not sure what he's doing. It appears to be an enemy aircraft. Operating to the south of where you are. <laughs> I'm sorry for Moose. Just caught him a few times unluckily. <laughs> I need this. So both my deaths have been crash related, unfortunately, so it does still say that my kill streak's going on in the chat, even though I've died twice now. I'm gonna get that boat just because it was looking a little bit sus. Praying that it doesn't hit. Luckily it doesn't. Now I've got to fire stealth jet. Fortunately, active radars me, but it's the same player with that camo that I know is not very good, so I'm not really stressed about it. Just gonna make a nice big angle and try to kill him in one pass. 52. I could have killed him there, probably. That was insane. Clean him up regardless. Couple kills on the ground there. Very, very close uh, free lock attempt. We've almost got 100 kills now, which is pretty nice. Looks like it's going to be in the bag, and we're controlling the pace of the game just so perfectly. Surely the, the friendlies have a bit of an effect on that as well, but I do think I'm doing pretty good in making sure the game's nice and even. It's a really good spot to stinger from as well, it's just hard to kill. Flare should be almost back up now. And uh, we did take another death, but I'm going to cut it out the video for unknown reasons. But that is 103 and 3 in the attack gel and the strike. I hope you guys enjoyed. It's just fun to go back to the old style of videos where we just play the game and talk about it rather than complaining about 2042, a situation that no one really has any control over. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Catch you in the next one. Peace.